Kaugwe. Hello, how are you? How are you? Lovely to see I'm you. I'm fine. Thank you for inviting me <laughs> to big things. It's our pleasure. You are big as well. That's why you're here. So looking forward to listening to you. Let me just remind our audience that we have the chat to send your questions. Start doing it now because they tend to end to arrive too late. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Just send them as soon as possible. So we'll pass them to Kai Uwe at the end of his talk. So looking forward, all yours. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Now, um, space traffic management, as, as, as you indicated, is, is, a, is a really big thing. Well, everything in space, of course, is big. And uh, indeed, space traffic management is probably the most important and the most uh, relevant uh, big thing in outer space, what we can foresee for now. Now, space traffic management, the next big thing uh, in outer space. Uh, this is absolutely true because we see something is going on in outer space. It is not only about more and more activities uh, in outer space, it is also about space being more and more congested and contested. We see a variety of, 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 of space activities we have not seen uh, before. We see, for example, governmental activities on the one side. We see research activities on the other side. We see also more and more private and commercial activities on the other side. And we see, to put even more complexity to all this, that more and more countries and more and more companies from countries are participating in space activities. So after we have had uh, only a handful of, of states uh, doing space activities a few decades ago, now we have more than 70 countries operating their own satellites in outer space. What does that mean? It means, as I said, that outer space is going to be more and more congested. And you won't believe it, even with this congestion, we do not have any traffic rules so far. It's, it's really amazing and unbelievable. Everybody just shoots out their stuff into outer space. This is allowed and this is good. Free access to outer space is wonderful and we have to maintain it. But with more and more countries and operators working in outer space, we have to have some rules. Rules of behavior, which we do not yet have, but which we have to establish in the near future. And now one other thing, which you have to be reminded of. Not all space objects, satellites or, uh, or other uh, uh, stuff, are maneuverable. So we have most of the space objects just being shot out, then rotating around the Earth, and nobody can change their course. So this is also something which is practically mind boggling, where we have to see and to face how unstable this environment is. You can, of course, predict what they will be doing. But if they are on a collision course, practically nothing can prevent them uh, from colliding. So all the maneuverable activities in outer space have to take care, have to be alert, and have to follow some code of conduct of behavior. And this is relevant. This is really, truly relevant. Look at the figure which I point, put down here. The global space economy currently is 350 billion euros annually. And we expect that it will rise to 1 trillion euros by the year 2040. So it will be the 1 trillion euro economy, global economy for space and services. So we have to do something that this is stable and that we can fulfill that. Because if we have collisions in outer space, if we cannot manage space traffic anymore, then we will also not re the potential benefits of a 1 trillion 
uh, global space economy. Now, we are looking at this space economy with uh, various uh, elements and in various directions upwards. Uh, this is uh, when we look at satellites, launches, and, and space operations, and then downwards also uh, when it comes to services and applications. And here, even more than the 70 countries which are operating in outer space are benefiting and participating in this global space economy. And we see, and this is also very important, uh, a very diverse participation of companies and of actors in this global space economy. It's not only the very, very big uh, companies, it's also small and medium-sized enterprises, mid-caps, which are part of the supply chain. And it's also, and this is very important, and this takes the dynamics uh, of outer space and uh, the space economy really forward, it is more and more startups. Startups in all the fields, startups in many, many countries. And this is really the key also of prosperity in this global space economy. And we have to provide them also with opportunities to use outer space also in the future. Now, one thing is also clear, and this is at the end of this text, that space assets have also become critical infrastructure. Critical infrastructure without which our societies will not work. So if we don't have a safe and secure space infrastructure, we will suffer on the earth by many, many, many problems. Now, therefore, we need also protection of this critical infrastructure. And this can either be done in a kind of safety arrangement or even military arrangement, but it's even more important that we secure the activities through codes of behavior through space traffic management. Now, this is the context. And uh, what I just said about the safety can be translated also in the issue of security. And uh, you see here a, a satellite exploding. And um, well, think back two days uh, when we had the news that Russia has been shooting down uh, one of its own satellites. Uh, this happened uh, in a way that uh, tens of thousands of debris pieces have been generated. They are now uh, disturbing and threatening other space activities, but it was even more so a signal of uh, preparedness and strength uh, to enter into an arms race in outer space. And this is something which is very bad. We can only hope that this uh, activity by Russia now leads to serious discussions about moratoria or even the ban of such testings. And this is one of the preconditions to have a safe environment in outer space to also establish then a space traffic management regime, which can then orderly prepare everything which is necessary that space can be used also in the future and certainly also now. Now, one thing is also an issue, and uh, this is, you might have heard of that uh, already, that there are plans and, and already uh, the first steps into setting up mega constellations in outer space. So satellite constellations with hundreds or even thousands of satellites, which will be used for internet services, broadband communication. Now, this is good. This is super because uh, it, it then also provides um, people and companies and actors all over the world with uh, internet hopefully a little bit more stable than, than, than mine was uh, in the beginning. Uh, but uh, it is also an issue for uh, space traffic, uh, because imagine now we have uh, less than 10,000 satellites uh, operating in outer space. Uh, there will be a doubling or, or tripling or, or 10 times as many satellites if all these mega constellations will be put in place. And this is really an alarm bell, you heard it, 
an alarm bell, uh, which is uh, and has to be used uh, for establishing uh, space traffic management for the purpose of making space operations safer. Now, in this situation, uh, we, we really have to, to think uh, differently. So far, space law and regulations dealt with the question of what is the status of outer space and what is the status of the actors in outer space. We now currently work on space traffic management on regulating the behavior in outer space. And this is completely new. And this is something uh, where we really uh, need to think completely new to not lose the control over the space environment, but to make space activities foreseeable if we do not want to face by the end of the decade that we cannot uh, use space anymore in a safe environment and therefore also will not be able to get all these benefits from the economy to engage in, in many new activities and to be sure that space activities can be conducted well. Now, what is space uh, traffic management? It's really complex and it's multifaceted. This is why it is a, a really big thing. Um, its tasks comprise a, a really enormous breadth of, of not only disciplines, but also actors. And, and in uh, short, they can be uh, characterized in, in three distinct aspects. And these are diplomatic, environmental, and technolo technological. And I will go through very quickly uh, uh, these three issues. Now, the first one, the, the diplomatic aspect, is a, is a huge task. Uh, if you want to set up a completely new legal, international legal system, uh, you really have to uh, turn the big, big wheel. And uh, this will considerably change the way uh, we will look at the governance of outer space <clears throat> and how we can then handle also the various interests of all the countries and also the private actors, so the companies in outer space. We have already ideas. We have ideas on how we can orient ourselves on other international regimes, like for the international telecommunications services, which is done by International Telecommunication Union, or of course, which is rather close uh, when, when you think of, of traffic regimes, uh, the air traffic management by the International Civil Aviation Organization. So we have models. Uh, we just have to start the process. Uh, it is already on the agenda of the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, but it will certainly take a lot of time, probably a decade, to work that out. Now, what is super interesting is, of course, the economical aspect of all this. Um, imagine the loss, I just talked about that, uh, of um, uh, a one trillion, bill, uh, trillion uh, euro uh, space economy uh, by 2040. But also imagine the opportunities. You have to build up completely new infrastructures. You have to build up completely new services. Services are slowly emerging, uh, but, but they will explode as you see it in other fields uh, of, of traffic management. So there will be an enormously growing market, which provides absolutely and obviously splendid opportunities also for startups, for agile companies, for system companies alike. And it will be a big, big business in itself. Now, the last point of these three is the technological aspect. And, and this is fascinating. Uh, imagine that all these objects go with a velocity of 30,000 kilometers per hour. So collision avoidance and traffic management will have to keep that in mind. And, and, and this is something which is of, of super difficult and complex uh, ways of uh, engineering. And uh, you cannot imagine what uh, efforts have to go into that. 
and completely new approaches also compared with air traffic management. And this is also a wonderful, a really wonderful field for um, AI, for autonomous uh, activities and for uh, sensor technologies, uh, the, the most uh, diverse uh, uh, system engineering and also the engineering of the satellites themselves. Now, these are aspects, the three key aspects of uh, space traffic management. And when we discuss these uh, points, it, it really becomes clear that in space traffic management, uh, you have actually the, the next big thing for outer space. Of course, it's, it's not as glamorous as it, uh, as for example, or in particular, uh, putting a, a, a human base on the moon. But believe me, it is something which has the highest relevance, not only for the future use of outer space, but it's also of highest relevance for all the areas which are supported by space activities here on Earth. And this is why we really have to take up this task. Uh, we need bright minds in um, working that out uh, on each of the levels, be it diplomatic, economic, and technological. And I'm pretty sure, and, and, and I'm really convinced, uh, I must say, that this is one of the most fascinating uh, activities you can imagine to shape the future uh, of space activities, uh, in particular also in view of maintaining space for peaceful purposes. And I can only say, uh, let's uh, start now in, in shaping and establishing space traffic management. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kai Uwe. Uh, I wasn't ready. <laughs> I was taking notes. This is a fascinating subject. So, uh, we are obviously at the, I wouldn't say the beginning, but uh, to, con to compare air traffic control with space traffic management is, uh, is, is similar, but not because uh, as you were mentioning uh, in space, one of the differences, um, so many, but uh, first of all, mm, when traffic, uh, air traffic controls, uh, the airplanes, you don't leave them hanging floating on space like you do with satellites. You were saying the, um, the, um, you were saying the uh, the unstable environment, so unstable and so unsafe. So one of the, the key um, aspects is, is safety. In that sense, um, could you explain a bit more, uh, Kai Iwe, on on what the, that debris, the debris in general, those satellites? What, what is what is the I don't know the regulation or those conferences that you go so often to in Europe? What is it coming? Because I think this is one of the major problems: uh, space debris, isn't it? Yes. You are perfectly right. Space debris is, is a current problem. It's, it's growing. Uh, we have already or had discussions for more than 20 years on the international level even. Uh, three or four decades ago, uh, the scientists already predicted what will uh, we have to face in view of space debris and they were right. So what we did uh, already in the last decade was to establish non-binding rules to mitigate space debris. So avoid space debris by launching and during the mission. And now the next step will be, first of all, to intensify the debris mitigation. So zero mitigation, uh, zero debris production during activities. And then the second point will be that we have to remove some of the big space debris, so very big satellites which are threatened to be hit by space debris itself and then explode and uh, create even more space debris, so another thousands or hundred thousands of, um, of uh, new debris pieces. So these are the two main tasks uh, we are facing and this is something where we are already working on but where we have not yet uh, perfectly proceeded. Uh, understood. So there's a lot of, of work to do to be done there in that uh, well, in, in this in this um, in this matter. In that sense, uh, uh, what is the relation or how uh, how much could you uh, manage in what is related to uh, space mining? 
as you know, in the past uh, couple of years, three years, uh, well, you know, there was uh, mining opportunities on the moon, other maybe satellite, pla- etc. But especially, specifically the moon. Um, is it something within your, um, um, I would say, within traffic management, or is because obviously you have to go and go back all that infrastructure that you were mentioning you were saying the power uh, there was the services infrastructure will explode what about that mining uh, space mining and uh, n- not to talk over obviously who who is the owner of that because who is the moon whose who's is the moon the first one that gets there is it everybody's so what it's found there what is the relationship between space mining and stm Well, uh, let me first uh, say the relationship between uh, space mining and uh, space traffic management. Uh, There will be, if we really establish uh, space mining on the moon, possibly in 20, 30 or 40 years, there will be a lot of traffic between Earth and moon. So space traffic management will also be very important for Uh, safeguarding not only the trip from Earth to Moon, but also uh, to to see that when you go from Earth to Moon, uh, you will pass a lot of satellites uh, uh, circling uh, the Earth, uh, possibly also many uh, of these um, mega constellations, that this is done in a safe way that uh, there are no accidents when you are crossing Uh, satellites and uh, when the travel to the moon is going through these planes uh, where there are a lot of satellites. It's like in a crossing where you have to take particular care, where you have uh, usually your roundabouts or or your traffic lights and there we have to have space traffic management otherwise there will be problems. Now your second question, who owns the moon? It's very easy. Um, it's very easy. Uh, it is nobody, and it's everybody. Everybody. <laughs> and that means that means um, in the Outer Space Treaty there is a provision in its Article Two, which says space is not open for national appropriation. So the states are not allowed to put their flag on the moon and say, "Well, this is my territory." And this, of course, also means uh, that uh, they have no power to to tell uh, or or to provide their companies uh, with uh, the rights to take away uh, resources from the moon. So this is first, nobody owns the moon. On the other hand, it's free for everybody. And uh, in 1979, the states have already thought about that. They they said, let's make a treaty which uh, creates the conditions for mining. And uh, this uh, moon treaty, moon agreement, as it is called, unfortunately has not yet been signed by many countries, but this is the key, like with the law of the sea and the deep seabed mining, to provide a regime which is fair, and uh, equitable so that everybody can participate in mining the moon and also that the benefits are shared amongst all countries uh, when moon mining is going on. Uh, And and I can only hope that that more and more countries sign that uh, treaty and ratify it in order then to create a, a structure and a regime which is not only looking Uh, and providing the opportunities for the first come, first serve, but for everybody, uh, which which I think is also uh, in the interest of of the world community and not by chance uh, is the outer space a common good, a global common, and we should maintain that. Wow, what a fascinating and complicated subject, Kai Uwe. 
As you were mentioning at the beginning, the most important and relevant big thing. No wonder you were invited to come to the Big Things Conference 2021. There's so much to be done. So uh, we want to see you next year so you can update us on all that hard work you have ahead with the team of experts you're working with in Europe. All the best, uh, <laughs> you don't get bored, that's for sure. Thank you so much for being on this conference this year. Kayu We Schroll from the World Economic Forum. Thank you so much and bon courage, we'll keep fighting and, and we'll stay tuned.